I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my workbook series, The Knowledge, will help you make changes like you've never made before. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And I'm Coach Victoria. And today we're gonna to talk about how to work on yourself. Mm-hmm. So before we start, I did wanna announce that I am now available for coaching alongside Coach Margaret and Coach Craig. So if you would like to book a one-on-one -on -one session, just go to the top of the website, click on our names, and go from there. Quick and easy to do, and we make it so simple to choose your time slots with us. We even have a little instruction video to watch because yes. we know how anxious you are. <laughs> yeah. So we'll be happy to do a coaching with you. Usually you'll feel better. Absolutely. Yeah. So Margaret, we're always talking about how to work on yourself. Well, my thought was there's probably a whole bunch of people out there saying, how do you do that? Yeah. What does that mean? Now, obviously we created the knowledge workbooks and the creative healing course to work on yourself. But Margaret has some other ideas for you as well. Yes, I have some other ideas. So the context that we're using here is that you've already had a breakup and you've gotten at least a little feedback on what made your partner unhappy. And you are ready to work on yourself. Okay. We tell you to maintain no contact and work on yourself. Okay. What does work on yourself mean? What am I supposed to do? I can just see people say, what do they want me to do? Mm -hmm. The first and most common reason that people break up, we are told, is lack of communication. For whatever reason, couples are not talking to each other. It's just that simple. And I think sometimes we talk about lack of communication like it was complicated, it really isn't. Mm -hmm. It's like sister, somebody said back there, open your mouth and make the words come out. It's easy. I think so many of us are traumatized Absolutely. that we didn't feel like we could talk growing up, so we don't exactly. want to talk. Mm -hmm. It's frightening now. Yeah. yeah. The first and most common reason that people break up is the lack of communication. All right, most of what we learn about communication in couples and families comes from how we grew up. Okay, that's our only <clears throat> experience in growing up in a family. Most people will say that they grew up in a normal family who communicated normally. However, with a little more exploration, it often becomes clear that what appeared to be a normal communication was quite restricted. Often both parents work and are too tired to talk with tired, hungry, grumpy children when they get home. Yeah. Because the kids have been home for a while. And the get parents home. are exhausted. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And tired. Yep. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. When you're oh. tired like that, you get irritable. Sure. Yeah. Although it is understandable, it is hurtful and lonely for the children who waited all day to see their parents when they came home. Yep. Yeah. And they want to play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course, they, they want to play, play. sit on your lap and tug on your sleeve and yeah. Play a game, let's do this, let's yeah. do that, let's go there. <laughs> there seems to be no time for conversation. It is wonderful if families can have dinner together and have a chance to find out what kind of day other family members had. It's not always possible, however. So one thing to do is to try to make an assessment of what communication was like in your family. Okay, so this is step number one on how to work on yourself. You have to go back and look at your growing up. <clears throat> okay, I know we say this all of the time, approximately every two minutes, and that's probably not going to change. You've got to go back and look at it. And here are some of the questions you can ask. Did you get to talk with your parents? If so, when during the day did that happen? Did your parents genuinely want to know what kind of day you had at school? If you had a bad day, were they genuinely interested in listening to your complaints and feelings about it? Okay? So if you showed up at the dinner table having had a terrible time in math class, does anybody want to hear about it? Yeah. Um, did you get a chance to communicate with your siblings? You may have had several of them at the dinner table. So did you get to communicate with your siblings and other family members who might live with you? You know, uncle, grandmother, whoever else. Okay? 
So does everybody in the house sit down together at any point during the day or separately, but do people communicate with each other? Were people cordial with each other or were there fights and screaming? I can envision, you know, three little kids who've been home since about three o'clock in the afternoon, the parents come home at 5.30, yep. quarter to six, the kids are tired, they're hungry, and they want to see their parents, and their parents are hassled and harassed and probably feel like they're late and want to get dinner started and so forth and so on. Yep. And there can be a lot of screaming and very little talking. Mm -hmm. Okay. Was home a safe haven or a situation to be survived? Okay. And you'd be surprised the answers I get when I say that. Um, <clears throat> were emotions discussed or avoided like the monkeypox? All right. Uh, and there are many families who are terrified to talk about emotions. Um, if kids said they were unhappy or sad or angry or frustrated, was their expression of emotion supported or were you told to stop whining? And it makes a huge difference, mm -hmm. okay? Um, I'm thinking of one woman I talked with relatively recently um, and she came home one day and said she was upset and her mother said, you're eight, you have no reason to be upset. Would you tell anybody else in the near future that you were upset? No, I wouldn't either. Mm. Okay. If kids said they were unhappy or sad or angry or frustrated, was their expression of emotion supported or were you told to stop whining? Uh, I just talked to one person who was told to go to their room until they were in a better mood. Mm. Uh, so you better not have any feelings is the message from all of that. Um, did the family eat together or did everyone take what they wanted and go to their room? Okay. Um, I can think of a family I worked with who insisted they were communicating, but when I asked enough nosy questions, no, they all went to their own space and worked on their own phone, computer, m movie, whatever they wanted to do. And there was no conversation at all. Okay? Wow. So they yeah. couldn't even tell me whether things were better or worse. They didn't talk to each other. Okay. If all goes swimmingly, everybody gets to interact with each other in a safe atmosphere. Kids get to hear about adult experiences and how adults think and how adults react to each other. So if you have half sane parents, you see them talk to each other and discuss things and make plans and so forth and so on. Yep. And it's very important for kids to see that. If all this doesn't happen for us, how are we supposed to know what to do as adults? We're not born knowing it. Yep. We okay. just kind of do the same thing that we... We kind of do the yeah. same thing that we're familiar with, which may not be really what we want to do at all. Right. Okay. Um, there was a very common practice of wait till your father gets home. I mm -hmm. don't know if you hear as much about it now as you did when I was a kid. Mothers would say it to unruly children. And it's a really terrible idea because mother gives away all her power and makes dad the bad guy. Nobody wants to come home to that. So dad walks in the door, he's had a hard day, and you need to deal with little Johnny. Okay? It also means that children are terrified all day. Mm -hmm. And I have heard that more times than I can tell you. That the mother would do that and say, wait, your father gets home, and then they're scared to death for the remainder of the day. So w when treating adults, I have come across many, many people who complain of starting to get depressed and anxious about four o'clock in the afternoon. You know why? Because we're coming up to the time that dad came home. Mm. All right. And dad was always the threat. Yeah, dad yeah. was always the threat. Um, wait till your father comes home. Wait till home. your father gets home. Yeah, that was well done. Can you say that again? <laughs> wait till your father comes home. That's about it. Let's wait till your father gets home. Um, I think there was a TV cartoony show at one point called that. But it's a really bad idea and everybody starts off upset, etc., etc. Okay? So we also hear lots about the dad who faithfully comes home from work. He works and supports his family, but then he flees his family for his newspaper or his workshop. Dad's tired too. Dad's mm -hmm. tired too. Yep. So when you want to start to work on yourself, here's a very simple suggestion. Write down your thoughts on what your family's communication was like. And it might have been non-existent. Um, and if that happens, I mean, that's nothing you can't work on. It's, it's not a problem. But you have to look at it and you have to understand it's always going to be your first instinct sort of to climb up or not talk or not argue or whatever. Um, 
So think about what your family communication was like and then have a vision of what you would like your own family of procreation to look like. Yep. Hello, little Johnny. I hope you had a good day at school today. Now. No. <laughs> yeah. The teacher's mean. That was I the father as a child. My, and I spilled, <laughs> my, I spilled my paint. Yeah. So anyway, I know that sounds work on yourself. What does that mean? What am I supposed to do? Okay? Think about your own family a whole lot. That's a wonderful place to start. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I always recommend get yourself a notebook and make some some notes of your best private thoughts. Okay? Yeah, those are some good things to think about and hopefully that will get you really processing things and thinking about what you want to be different, you know? And of course, if you enjoy activities like this, this is like what the workbooks and the course are about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All focused on strategies and reviewing and processing your past to have a healthier relationship. Yeah. Can I just add one more thing? Of course. Um, I remember I was a friendly child. I went to everybody's house. And I remember going home and saying to my mother, I went over to the Smiths today. It wasn't really the Smiths. And her explaining to me, yes, there are some families who don't talk to each other. And I thought, oh, that doesn't sound like a good idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's really interesting that your mom had the foresight to see that and mm -hmm. share that. Because a lot of people wouldn't have even had a mom that could tell that to right. them. My mom had been a social worker. Yeah. yeah. See, yeah. I don't think we've ever said that before. Oh, my yeah. mom was a social worker. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Back when they were still developing the theory. <laughs> <laughs> she was in at the ground floor. Yeah. But yes, she said so many helpful things like that. Yeah, there are some families like that. It's okay. Oh, all right. Mm -hmm. And I think, too, it could be important to look at how your family talked about you, Yeah. too, because I, I still see parents nowadays talking with somebody, a therapist, a practitioner, somebody, and they refer to their kid as if the kid's not even in the mm -hmm. room yeah. sometimes. How disrespectful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's and true. also siblings and how different family members talk about you to each other yeah. mm -hmm. could very much impact the way you communicate Absolutely. as an adult. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So again, the question is, why is all that important now? And we keep saying, but it really is. And if mm -hmm. you do some of this, you'll quickly see how it works. Okay. All right. So hopefully you found this helpful. And of course, if you want to get our help personally, you could do that on my website, AskCraig.net. I do email coaching and I do Skype. Margaret is available for Skype coaching. If you feel I can be helpful, please sign up. And Victoria is available for Skype coaching. I'm excited to speak with you. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And I'm Coach Victoria. And we will talk with you soon.